Hello, 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 hello. Welcome, welcome back to my channel. This is your girl, Omayas Connor, coming to you on this wonderful Tuesday. I'm sure you guys have had a wonderful week, a wonderful start to the week. And thanks for joining me. Thanks for your continued support. I do not take it for granted. Trust everything is well with you guys. I hope it's not too hurt, hot where you are. It's very hot over where I am. It's like over 100 degrees some days. But hey, it is what it is. So today, me, I want to touch on this because <laughs> it was a conversation that was had amongst friends uh, a few days ago. And uh, I wanted to bring it uh, to the platform today so we can, we can dissect and people can throw in their thoughts into this um, conversation. <laughs> eh, please, you guys, let me know if you're hearing me. Or, hey, I don't want to feel like I'm talking to myself. Or, I hope I haven't been talking to myself. Let me make sure. Please let me know. Come kindly comment if you can hear me. Please, please, please. If you can hear me, please. Kindly comment. Eh? Let me know, guys. Please let me know if you can hear me. I beg, I beg. You people should let me know. Make you know besides just they talk to myself and Let me know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Oh, okay. Oh, money and wealth. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you for joining me. Chica, welcome. G8, welcome. Georgina, thank you. You can hear me loud and clear. Yay! <laughs> Thank you guys. So um, on to this matter, I'm going to quick talk. Come. I don't want I don't go tell with you now today. I just make a play come because the conversation was very heated. So what do you guys think? So was a conversation had like ah, it'd be like say our parents understood the assignment when it came to marriage, getting married and staying married. What are you guys' thoughts? Do you think that is really the case? Or is it that Back then, there were no options for women, you know. Oh, I need to fix the sound. Really? How? Please. Anyone else thinks I need to fix the, the sound? Dele says I need to fix the sound. Please let me know. Anyone else feels that way? Let me, I just want to make sure it's not, it's, uh, it, I, I am not the problem. Am I the one? Is it from me? Is the sound terrible? How about now? Is it very clear? Is it clear? Is it clear? Okay, I don't need to fix it. Okay, Marriott. Oh, thank you very much. Marriott! Thanks for joining. Okay. So, Dele, it'd be like saying now you're going to need to fix your... Oh, no. I hope your sound is good. Poor sound quality? Oh, my yeah, Williams. Really? Are you... Everybody else doesn't think so. So I have three, one, two, three against two. Um, please let me know if my sound is, is better. Somebody says it's poor sound quality. Wait, let me see. How about now, guys? How about now? I turned up the volume to the loudest, I think. Let me know. Please let me know. Okay, Shagun, thank you very... Oh, sound is unclear. Are you kidding me? What? Wow. Uh, okay, sound is perfect, though. Shagun... Are you guys messing with me? <laughs> Mona, not mess with me. Okay, I'm going to go with the majority. Majority thing believes my sound is good. So I'm, going to, I'm just going to go ahead and do this anyhow, anyhow. Okay, I see uh, money and wealth. Let me see. Let me read your comment. Women didn't have as much options as they do now. Okay, okay, okay. 
Uh, hence why women of today are not rushing to marry, divorce rates are higher, and women do most of the filing. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, G. I appreciate that. Uh -huh. Maybe they want to buy me a new Michael. Hey, I'm telling my sister, I will welcome a new Michael. Uh, onto, up, onto upper levels now. Yeah, step up to Mike. <laughs> so Mike will not be an issue again. <laughs> thank you. Thank for my channel, right? It's normal, I thought so. Exactly, right? Larry, everybody was saying that my, my sound, my sound, but uh, a lot of people think my sound is good. The, um, the, at least the majority. So I, I'm just going to go ahead. Um, <laughs> K Baba say, K Baba say, money I wait, wait now, nah, make sure start. <laughs> okay, so I am going to start the conversation. Be, be. Let's be doing it like that. Mm? So we do not think, because this was a very hot conversation. No? So, so some people, people had different, different opinions. Like, It'd be like, say, our parents understood the assignment of marriage and they were able to, like, you know, work it out regardless and stay in the marriage and have healthy children. So which one can be our own today? When we say you go look, look left, you go look right. This one will say I no do again. This one will say I no do. It's very easy to just throw in the towel. You know what I mean? So we do not think. I want to, I want to... I want to I want to read your opinions, your thoughts on it, and then we can have a conversation. What do you is that really the case? Is this true? Did our parents get it right? I mean, did you know, is it um did they on the did you really understand the assignment and actually stayed regard, I mean, stayed to sustain the marriage, or was it that they did not have option? You know, because we have to put, we have to talk about history a little bit. Too. We know that back then women did not really have much of a say, right? I know at some point in history, though, I have to say this. I have to really point this out. At some point in history, women had very, very, uh, uh, women had leadership roles prior to colonialist women played very key roles in the society. There were societies where women were like the leaders in communities and single-handedly eh, hand managed those communities. So let's not, let's not, let's not uh, drift too far away from history. Prior to colonialism, women played very vital roles in African communities and the men understood the women's power and respected it. So after colonialism, there's a lot that has happened to the point where women are, you know, were seen as you have to consistently be subjected and put on that, you know, for lack of better words. So what are your thoughts? Okay, women endured more. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, this is true. This is, this is a point. This is a good point, Mirio, too. Uh, the ones with bad marriages are miserable and resentful and, they are, and their children are not healthy. That's why their kids' generation marriages are not lasting. That's a great point. That's a very great point. There's, the people who, had, who didn't have good experiences growing up in homes because their parents or, you know, the marriage was not, it wasn't healthy for both parties, for the mother and the father. But because the mom did not have anywhere else to go, and the parents, the the grandparents or the mom's parents will be like, no, you're married, that's it. You stay in your husband's house. You take whatever. You're not coming back to her house. So she had to do what she needed to do to stay quietly and put up with everything that sometimes was too unbearable to put up with. And the children grew up in that, you know, and then they left the house with a lot of resentment. They carried a lot of resentment with them. You know, so um, Tokumbo, okay. Women had leadership roles. Uh, my point is that prior to colonialism, Tokumbo, did you just join? I said prior to colonialism, women had key leadership roles. Women fought in wars. 
Do you know that in your history, women fought battles, though? Okay, there were women in battlefields too. And there were times that women literally were leaders in their communities prior to colonialism. Eh? Please, let's be trying to be reading our history so that we can be knowing more. Mm? Hey, God's child, welcome. Okay, thank you for joining. So this is what I mean. Like women had leadership rules, meaning they managed communities. They, they single-handedly had the authority to manage communities, and some of them were priestesses, right? And they were they would be the ones to bring news to the to the uh, town to deliver the town from different types of things that were happening prior to colonialism. That's what I mean, Tukumbo. So, what do you guys think? Do you think that our parents? got it right i'm waiting for more comments so so i can i can i can now share my link so we can talk a little bit about it before we end the show today for today because th this conversation was very hot some people believe that you know our parents had the the um they had the lock the key <laughs> the key, the answers to the re they had the recipes for a successful marriage. While some others believe they didn't, they just had no other choice but to put up with what was given to them. They had to work with what they had. They didn't have much of a, a, a voice in their homes. Some of them ended up broken. Some of them did not survive it. You know, so make we talk. Make we talk about them. Okay, I have a guest. Mary <laughs> in the house. Yeah, yeah. Woof, woof, woof. <laughs> I'm dancing as well to right here. <laughs> I can't hear you very well, no, Mary. Okay. Oh my me. god, please. Yeah, no. using bedroom voice, so I'm I using spoken gee <laughs> okay now i can hear you oh a little better God, i literally have my mouth on on my microphone <laughs> <laughs> okay good to speak to you <laughs> yay how now how are you how do you feel how do you feel i am so much better than how i felt before i'm still wow, I'm so great. fatigued i still have the brain fog like i don't remember things people's names <laughs> Oh, um, but no, I'm 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 much better now. I I feel better, so I think maybe by this weekend I will be closer to hundred percent. So I'm fine. Okay. Thank you for asking. Absolutely. I mean, are, you've been on my you? mind. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Oh yeah, let's have it. Okay. Um, I wanted to. I loved. I, you know, oh my, there's a reason we watch your channel. I <laughs> loved your comments about how prior to colonization. I don't know about other African women, but Nigerian women had their power. They had their own space. Yes. I always talk about Yoruba women because that is the history that I've more followed. Like, right. they were the, you hear about the Yelu or Mo. She was essentially the pharmacist to the king. Like, the women yeah. were the ones selling the things that the men farmed. Like, even more recently, like, the men who farm and the women sold, they, they managed the finances in their household. So, mm -hmm. for the person who put the comment there, what I, that were, they was were asking, what do you mean women had leadership roles? They had their place. They had their power. Right. When colonization came, the British brought their own system. In their own system, women were at the same level as children. They had right. no rights. So when they, when they brought their own system to us, only the men could work in the form of education. The women were, were they didn't have those jobs. Right. So it's good for us to know our history because sometimes when we don't know who we are, we we behave in very strange ways. Like all those women that got married, you know, in the 50s, 60s, they got married in an er era where they, they had lost their power for a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them that got the education and have formal jobs had lost the power that they would normally have. So probably like the culture also, obviously it tells you that you need to go to your husband's house and do what your husband says, whatever it is. So a lot of yeah. them would have gotten married to people that, Maybe they shouldn't have gotten married to, but because the culture is so strong and it keeps you in your family house, whatever, the husband that you married, it, divorce or leaving that husband was not something that they wanted to do or they 
they thought they could do. So did they do it well? I would say they did because they understood commitment. They understood that it's not just about the feelings. It's not just about somebody having money or somebody having looks. It's about raising a family. So they understood that, which is not something that I think people for this from this generation understand. They always, you know, about the moving to the next thing, you know, cause people love that kind of energy. So yeah, like, so we don't get it, which is true. But so there are upsides to how they did it. But what I I wouldn't say a blanket statement their generation. I'll say the people that had good lives, you can see why they had you can see why they had good marriages, right? They are people who chose the right person for them. They are people who wanted that family unit. Right. They poured their money into educating the, the children that they had and to make them the best possible people. Now, the ones who had bad marriages, they chose the wrong person for them, but then they couldn't leave the bad marriages they produce dysfunctional children because you can see it now. Like you can see the people that you're trying to date. You can see the dysfunction from 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 up close because they learned all that dysfunction from their home. Like where you have maybe like an abusive parent, or you have people who talk down at you because maybe the dad talks down on the mom, or the mom talks down on the dad. Or what when you meet people who come from dysfunctional homes, you can tell. So for the ones who did have bad marriages. They didn't produce healthy children. They didn't produce great people in the society. They didn't because those people would treat their husbands and their wives exactly the same way that their parents treated each other. So I don't know if they had the sauce, like blanket all of them, but the ones that did it well, they did it very well because they made the right choices for them. But the ones that didn't do it well, you can see the results in like how the society is in general. So I'm not, I don't know if, like they did marriage better, but they definitely had the commitment part, the goal of marriage. I think they had that ingrained in them very well, unlike us, who we don't have that way. Very quick, quick, quick. Like we want our results quick, quick. We want the person to have money quick, quick. We want the person to be perfection immediately. Like we don't really right. have grace and time to learn. Like we're not patient which is what they understood. Like they, they didn't see an out. So they stayed there, good or bad. We don't have that. So we, we have all the downsides. Like we're choosing the wrong people. And then we also don't have the fortitude to stay in relationships for the greater good of like, the family. So we're like, our own generation is, you know what, actually, I'm going to agree with whoever it is that said it. I think our generation has it worse, worse on both ends. Like we don't even have any of the, the qualities that will sustain a relationship. This is yep that 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 <laughs> that point that right there that part right there I was waiting for somebody to say it I didn't want to be the one to say it and they will not say ah, she has come again no <laughs> and, I, didn't, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't think I was going to say, I I was I didn't start at this point but I think by the time I spoke and spoke and spoke I realized I <laughs> you had you found your way to the answer <laughs> somehow they, they had it they had it better because I I think about my my parents have been together since i think my mom was 14 and my dad was 16 wow yeah they've been together very long. like they i don't think they can i know my mom pretends like she can't survive without him but they can't survive without each other like they they chose the right person for themselves and they poured like what i'm saying is that they, they poured their energy into me i'm an only each child. other yeah into right. each other and into mm. me like i was like them having this great family was a goal for them so it worked for them because they they had the right person they went through like tough things like one person having money one person not having money not per- one person having success like they didn't leave each other right they were tough and they've had like tough things happen to them so i'm thinking if it was this generation first of all what is the likelihood they're going to find this couple who've been together since jess says whatever and <laughs> what is the likelihood that they will go through tough situations and one person wouldn't leave the other and what is the likelihood that they will both realize that actually, even if we're going through tough situations, can we spend all our last penny making our family great? I don't I don't think our generation has that. So I, I'm going to agree that maybe the older generation had it. Like they had some things wrong, don't get me wrong. But overall, 
they have the right idea like before you build a nation you have to start from the family level and right we're failing <laughs> we're failing right now so that's my opinion i'll go back into the comments okay so before you leave i want to ask this question before you go back to the comment session comment queen that's where you have power i know i've seen your power in the comment section. <laughs> so before you go so from everything you've said, and I'm very happy you, I was very happy that you um, broke it down the way you did. Now, that says that somehow the Western influence, right, has impacted a lot of us in Africa. Because prior to that, prior to, there was a sense of uh, loyalty, right, to yeah. your partner and to your relationship it was more about building your home than the lovey-dovey oh my god it gives me goosebumps all over yeah. my body and all of that that was <laughs> not a thing back then you meet someone can the person provide for you those are the big that those are the important question can the yeah. person is does the person uh, is he family oriented can he provide? Is he healthy? That was it. There were few things. There were not many. And money did not play a role. So that's, in, in, in a roundabout way, that's what it is sounding like. And that's what I'm hearing more and more. I just wanted to ask you, so do you think that the Obodo way come affect us for Africa before you go? Help us answer that question. Biko. Oh my God. You know what? Um, I don't, it's, you know, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Um, because, you know, like, it, it, there is no, if it has affected everything we do, the way we speak, the language we speak, what we eat. Either yeah. Way, like, if you look at Nigerian couples, you see them on, online and they'll do like one guy on, guy on, down on one knee with the ring and things like that. And, you know, I'm just like, no, go and ask, like, you should go and ask the parents of the girl. And then you go and beg the parents of the girl so you can marry her, not get down and beg her. Like, so even like if even in small things like that, like the things that we watch on TV, the things that we observe in the dominant culture, which is what you see on TV, American entertainment, if it affects even something as little as our own like proposal, asking for hand in marriage, why would it be different for, for actual marriages? So I, I actually do believe that it has changed how we view things. Right. But not entirely bad. Not, it's not that, oh no, because we see all these people getting divorced, we're also getting divorced. But it's more that we also understand some things better. Like when you've made a bad choice and you've chosen maybe like a violent partner or you've, you've chosen a partner who um, harms you in some way, like it's because of the women people that were watching now, like we realize actually you need to leave that place. It's not it's not good for your health to be in that kind of union. But I think we're also divorcing for bad reasons. Like for example, you know, the guy who loses his job and doesn't make enough money. Like the older older couples, the woman just carries on being the breadwinner. You don't hear anything. Like yeah, just, like because the family is the goal. Like this right, is the, right. But for our generation, if he goes broke and you you see on social media that I've been the one funding this family for the past three years, you know, and then I want to get a divorce. So yeah. the reasons, the grounds for divorce for older generations was something maybe more fundamental, like this person is violent or they have children all over the place. But for our generation, because we don't have that family unit as the priority, we're very self-centered. It's more... Like any small slight, we just stack it up and it's like, okay, I think I need to end this union as opposed to, okay, I created a child, let's carry on so that we can improve. So yeah, I think definitely having Western um, or Western cultures have influenced us. Some good that you do need to leave very bad situations. Right. But some bad in that we have, we're becoming like them where, your nuclear family is not important anymore. And that's right. not a good... Like, I, I, even when I... Even from here, when I look at the way Nigerians talk about their nuclear family, it kind of bugs me, like, yo, like, what's happening? Like, this doesn't... It's not like I'm, I'm talking to, like, an able person, the way they view their nuclear family, which is not something that we used to have. Mm -hmm. So it has made a difference. I don't want to agree too much because then we'll then 
we tend to like you know go into the extreme so we forget all the good things that we we have picked up from those cultures but yeah it has i think it has weakened our our bond with our family and what used to make us great in that uh we like to keep our families together and we have family goals and we work towards that so yeah i i'm going to say it has it has changed things but it, it has influenced it in a way it has influenced it but i want to say that some of those influences like the, the western influences is what has made women realize that they can do better than what yes yeah, i agree <laughs> And I know people, I know the reason why, okay, the reason I'm struggling to completely agree is because a lot of men typically say it's because African women are copying the Oyibo women or they're copying feminism. That's what they're But the men are copying the the Oyibos too. So it's both ways. It's not just the (laughs) African. The funny thing is the environment influences us as human beings, whether we like it or not. Where you grow and the people you're surrounded by affects you and the way you think and the way you do things, okay? So if, for instance, let's say we're taking the good stuff. I want to take, I'm taking the good stuff from what I'm learning here, right? Mm. And I I, I understand that, oh, no, my husband doesn't have to do everything because where I come from is the man that does everything, Mm. okay? Now go provide, now go food to chop, clothes for, to, for poor, yeah. poor guy. Poor guy, right? So you're dumping all these things. But because of, you know, the exposure that I have and the fact that I have hands now, I can walk, I can do my own thing. He doesn't have to do everything. We can, I can take stuff off of him. So he doesn't have to bear that burden. And also, if let's say, you know, um, money no day like that from inside it won't be an issue for me like i know go see him say oh oh, this man whatever i still respect him regardless that part of that african part of me will show up right because i understand that the assignment is the family not necessarily whether the man you get you know get that one not suppose i know be fair with that wife let's put it that way you know so it does influence both the man and the woman because even in the way that the man sometimes will treat the woman it's not the way that is accepted really in an african there's a lot of things that we ascribe to the african setup that's not necessarily true there's some false in it you know everything's been modeled up right yeah so i just for me i just say can we just be human beings first because if i see you Assuming you, you're a guy, for instance, and I see you as a guy, and I see you as a human being, I'm going to treat you as a human being first. Mm-hmm. So your character will determine whether I want to continue to be friends with you or not, right? Mm-hmm. So it's the same thing with the woman. If you're a man, you meet a woman, hey, you won't know whether this woman a human being, first of all, you get human feeling, he kind, he understands certain things difficult sometimes. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that that's the that's where it ought to start from but there's been a lot of uh, you know it's been modeled in the water so much and i also yeah. believe that every family needs to create their own regime your their own routine in the home not every family does not have to look exactly like the next no, one no they don't no, they you don't. know because there's yeah. some families where it works for them if the woman is fine and doing okay and it, it's not a bother to the man in some other families that may not work so you have to take your victim as you find him if you meet the man and he's a certain way or you meet the woman is a certain way understanding each other and knowing what the assignment is what is the assignment what are we here together what are we trying to do you understand this is why i don't believe in you just be dating dating like saying a rapper you they change i don't believe in that it's a waste of time and energy what do you want as a man what are you looking for right if you're coming and you're looking for um marriage whatever what do you mean when you say marriage are you focused on building a family a building a strong family or are you just focused on you know i just want day with this girl the girl fine you go make me look good with my friends so she get money she hold you know so that way whatever the reason is you know so um just before go I ahead go, i was gonna mention that i think it's something that i've thought about a little bit i think that 
the African, again, I don't like you saying Africa because Africa is so diverse. I've never been to all of the countries, but I'll say that the Nigerian woman has evolved quicker than the Nigerian man has. True. So it creates that imbalance when they're out dating or they marry each other. So the man, you know, they used to do everything right. But now the man expects that the woman does something too. But the Nigerian woman accepts that she's going to do something to contribute to her family and make money for her family. But she also has higher expectations because of those Western things that we've seen, right? And that causes a challenge because the man is thinking, I married an African woman. What are you doing? And she's thinking, well, I'm an African woman, but I'm not that person that you're just going, that's going to be your doormat. I just there to be your elevated mother that you can, you know, also have, you know, relations with later, you know, like I'm more yeah. than that. So I think there's also that challenge for this generation, not, not the parents' generation. Like, obviously, they, they were also evolving, but I think they were evolving at a similar pace. So I think the women have evolved so much more and the men haven't caught up. So there is that conflict all the time. So when, like in the past, like in our, my parents' generation or the ones before, you know, the man could cheat on his wife with somebody else and it's not the end of the marriage. It's fine. It's a, you know, a fight. Right. Marriage, right. They will have a fight about it. Maybe if it's too many women. And sometimes they won't even talk. talk. Nobody would know. Nobody would know. Let's say he yes. was like a really randy, reckless man and there were so many women in the neighborhood. Maybe if you call a family meeting. The yes. Thing is that the woman now, if you cheat once, it's, 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 more, it's already a family meeting issue, right? Because she wants more from you. She might present it in the public like, okay, it's not a big deal or it didn't happen. But in the union, she expects fidelity from this man and she expects him to support her. Like she expects a little more than my mother's generation demanded of their men. That's right. what it is. And the, for the men, they are evolving and they have evolved, but not as quickly as the women want them to evolve. So that's, it also explains why they tend to divorce more, right? Because women think, I deserve better than this. You know, I don't have mm -hmm. to do this, you know. So they leave. But meanwhile, in the earlier generation, the man might have even done more because he's not as evolved as this, as the African man from this generation. But the women had lower expectations. <laughs> Yes. Was yes. You provide money and you show up at night to eat my food. They didn't ask for a lot more. You can, you can even see now in there, like with good couples, you can see them being playful. But even then, you can still see that the women didn't. De they don't demand too much from the men. Like they just say, yes. oh, "Oh, he's a man. He doesn't know how to play." Yes. Oh, like, yes. my, like my dad. Like it, I think he it was in his forties that he first knew how to like actually. I think we made him make noodles or something. All his life, all he knew how to do was boil water and he loves um, plantain, dodo and egg. So he knows how to make that. He didn't know how to make anything else. And one day he was complaining that, you know that this, your mom did not make me. And I'm like, how, mom, how, why didn't you make him anything? She said she doesn't have time. So I took him to the kitchen. I said, okay, this is how you're going to make X, Y, Z. So he didn't learn how to make anything else until he was in his 40s. My mom never demanded anything from him. Right. They were both in their 40s. But now, a young, if I'm getting married, you're telling me you don't know how to make anything other than do egg. Okay, do you have do you have money for a cook? No? Oh, <laughs> then you need to learn. You know, so I think the difference is that because we've evolved so much, they have evolved, but not as quickly. It creates yeah. tension. And because, again, we are now more westernized, we think the solution is okay, we live our separate lives, or oh, this is too much, I'm leaving, I'm going to find somebody else. As opposed to in the previous generation, when they found those bottlenecks, for them it was, you know, we we on our life here. We are going to be like, yes. they don't even think about it, just like, we just carry on and keep on growing our family. I'll ignore that, I'll, you know, suck it up, maybe we'll get a maid, maybe I'll just cook more, I'll have my job, take care of the kids and cook more. But women now are asking for more things, and the men are struggling a little bit to accept that their role as a man has changed from just being provider and being present to being emotionally available and loving and supporting. That's just, I think, what the struggle is. So what we can learn from the parents is we need to be tenacious in our goal yes. to create families. Like yes. one unit, not creating multiple families in different neighborhoods. Or no. One unit family where you pour into each other, pour into your kids, and 
as actively overcome your obstacles and be the support to each other. That's what we need to focus on for this. So the parents, I think the parents had the right idea. We're just doing it wrong. <laughs> yeah, we we do that. That's exact. That's 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 why that's what we came to during this conversation. I was like, we're doing it wrong. I think our parents understood the assignment. When I mean the assignment, I mean they understood like. Uh, Mirabel just kind of put it saucily for me and that's why I kept I held on to this she mm -hmm. said all the generation had the family unit as a priority right so whether it worked out or not they need they needed it to stay together for everything else to stay in place that is that sums it up beautifully for yeah. the and that's what I think and that's why I wanted to have this conversation bring it here on this platform so that we can talk about it because in as much as we talk about the older generations and our parents and all that, there's a lot that we can learn from them. Matter of fact, there should be the hashtag couples goals for all of us. Yep. Instead of looking for couples goals from China <laughs> and from a different part of so your parents, your papa and mama minutes. couples go. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Yeah. Like, you know what? I, I feel like we need, I don't know if they can, maybe somebody like a creative, they need to create a show on YouTube because I saw it on like the Indian matchmaking show where they like they bring older couples and they say tell us how you met and then tell us what you like about each other like you see like when those couples discuss you see like they they point out like what they found annoying in their partner but they laugh about it now because they managed to like get over those so I think we need to see older older successful happy couples in Nigeria you know tell us about their you know how they met what the challenges were what advice they have for young people because i think we're, we're missing it <laughs> we're missing yeah it. i yeah I, I i it's something that i'm really really interested in to be honest and i really would actually see myself interviewing older couples and asking them if those nigerian couples will be very open i would really appreciate if i have like older couples that i would be very honest about their relationship so that the young ones can learn. Because to be honest, I don't like what I'm seeing, especially with um, Nigerian couples just leaving each other. That thing irks me in a way, you know? I understand though that there are issues. I understand that there are things that you cannot, you know, put up with. But I think that people are doing it too much, meaning they're not even trying. They don't even want to put in the effort anymore. And it is the children that are suffering as a result of this, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So it, it's it's a it's a subject that I'm really, really curious because I have learned so much from my own parents. Just just talking to my mom and hearing her story and everything. I've learned so much. And because of what she shared and she's what she's taught me from, you know, and things I've heard. I mean, don't get me wrong. Of course, my parents were not perfect. No they had is perfect. Right. <laughs> but they were couple goals. Yeah. Because they were so close, you know, when everybody left home, they became best friends. Like they couldn't do anything without each other. And I saw them blossom into this beautiful matter of fact, they've not looked so much alike. Sometimes you're talking to my dad and like, where's your wife? You know, so it to me, I think that's a beautiful thing. It's good to see that. Yeah. And I think these young people, I don't know what it is. We need more people, more older people to come out and really talk to the younger ones yeah. about what, because the priority should be the family unit, really, if you think yeah. about it. And it should not, it's not about the goose, the feelings, the butterflies, the jitters. It's not about that. No. It's about <laughs> finding someone that, that's a human being that understands the assignment. Love can come eventually. That's just the truth. Love will come. But of course, that doesn't mean you should go and marry an enemy or marry someone that you can't stand. Please, that's not what I'm saying. Don't take my words out of context and run with it. No. I'm saying that we can, even with the fact that we're saying that, you know, the men are, you know, uh, not, you know, coming up as fast or they're not, you know, learning on learning certain things as fast as women are, there are some men who are open to wanting to learn and be better, but they just need the right partner to encourage them to be better. That's just the truth. There's some men who have admitted to themselves, ah, man, I need to work on this area. Yeah. But then they have not met someone who is patient enough and who's open-minded enough to say, okay, I know, see, 
I know say this you know learn up for house. I know, I know. We know where we they come from. But let's as long as you're open, let's do this and keep because nobody is perfect. And when you are marrying someone, you're marrying them as raw material. We've forgotten that too. When you meet someone, that person is raw material to you. That person is not going to come as complete. It's not possible. You, Because when you now end up being together, you start to help each other blossom. That's how it ought to be. You know? So, Marriott, you have... Let me share some comments before you leave. Being Pe says, well, I don't think our generation is not doing it right. We just want to do it differently. Like I grew up in a household where I didn't feel or see the love between. I mean, there were there were couples like that. I get it. I understand that. And then I read the book, The Color Purple, and also watched the movie. And it seems like I, either African men have always looked down on their women, or they learn to degrade them after they they learn to degrade them after they saw. Because why I said this is back before colonialism, they had priestesses, they had um matrons people who helped women deliver you had we, women that were in charge of children that probably didn't have parents they didn't call them orphanages then and children who didn't have parents had homes they placed them in homes either your sister's children somebody who doesn't have children they will give them to this person to raise there was that top type of thing happening and there were women who fought in wars please Let's start to learn our history more and more. There were women who also fought on the battlefield, though. It was not just in the kitchen. And there were women who were the farmers in the house. The men did not farm. It was the women that went to the farm with the children. Let's understand, though. So prior to the colonialist era, there were things that were organized in such a way that everybody understood the assignment. Does that mean that it was a perfect um, scenario? No. Of course, everything needs improvement. So if we're reading our history, let's understand that and put it in context, you know, because you cannot tell me that, oh, women were always subjugated. Now lie, Lori Ro. <laughs> now, Younger generation needs to feel happy and satisfied in their marriage to keep it going. We also lack the level of resilience, that's the word, in the family unit. Yes, resilience, loyalty. Not to bad, though, not to okay, not to buy level. But resilience as in it's about this family, we're going to pour what we need to pour into it to ensure that it thrives. You know? And then being places also, it is not necessary that older generations did not get it right, but it was different in their time. What family is about, people have evolved and that's okay, which is true, absolutely. Um, uh, not really, not lower your expectations, as Sister Jibola. That's not what I mean. See, this lower your expectation, when people say lower your expectations, sometimes people take the wrong meaning out of it and run with it. No. Being realistic and understanding the assignment is not lowering your expectation. It is saying that what does the family unit really mean to me? What does it mean? What does what does the family mean to me? Do I just want to get married for my own personal satisfaction so that I can do all the kiriwa that I need? Or do I just want to uh, get connected to this person so that you know i can uh, be pr provided for what is what does what does the family unit mean to you that's not lowering your expectation lowering your expectation is taking less than what you deserve what i'm talking about doesn't have anything to do with that you know so <laughs> um hey Oh my God, Marriott has disappeared. Sorry, oh Marriott, I kept you longer than usual. Then you just jump out. No, Allah, but thanks for your contribution. I really, really enjoyed it, man. You dropped a lot of um, nuggets that I believe that a lot of people are going to listen to and be like, wow, woo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, Marriott. I love you. 
Um, you you yet to see ah my own parents are couples go low. I'm sorry. Now my own parents now they be my couples go. <laughs> There's no I don't see any other couple go out there apart from my parents. So because they really represented. Um, yeah, I really yeah, Mirabel, I really want to hear from older couples if they're willing to be transparent with us. Yeah, because this new generation is hot. Yeah, exactly. I really want to hear it. Exactly. Thank you, Mirabel. This is what I'm talking about. My parents were me were hashtag couple goals for me. Those that's my yardstick. My parents are my yardstick for measuring. Ah, uh. <laughs> sister Jibola, no, no, hala. Uh, uh, um, uh, Sister Bingpe, do you want to come in and share what your different opinion is? Let me share my link again. Maybe you can throw some, you know, um, give your insights to this as well. Let's have this conversation because I think that we need to be having this conversation. We need to continue to have this conversation. Um, the reason why people are divorcing are different issues which are mostly related to abuse, infidelity. Well, not necessarily. Not everybody um, divorces based on abuse, infidelity. There's, do you know there's some women and men who just leave each other because they say love, no, they did again. Not because of abuse, not because of infidelity. They just say they are bored and they walk away. Or they find somebody else and just move on with the person. It didn't have anything to do with abuse or infidelity. Of course, we have those issues, as you and I know, but that's not a lot of the reasons most of the time. And sometimes, even people who complain of these issues, we found out that some of them have lied about it just because they wanted what they wanted. Right? Just because they wanted what they wanted, right? So some some women will lie. Some men have lied, you know. So and and I'm not. This is not to dismiss someone's experience. So I'm not trying to dismiss anybody's experience. I don't support abuse in any way, shape, or form. We're just having a very open conversation right now. Hey, Adaya, lovely to see you here. How the names of our past here. Exactly. Thank you, Adaya. This is why we need to, I keep saying it, let's learn our history. Be cool. Google is your friend. Find out, learn more about African history. Try to learn from people, Africans that wrote African history, challenging the history that was written by the Fufunene people. Make sure there's a comparison when you're reading your history. Don't just read the, read the Fufunene own and take it as the truth. No, history is always told from the from the side of the one who's victorious. So you want to be careful. The lion is not the the antelope is not going to tell you the story of the lion. You know, go tell you say lion chop him. You go talk him in such a way that you will you would you would dismiss and you will feel like you know this lion is a terrible person. So I just want to put that out there. Um. I'm just going through comments now. Uh, oh, okay. May lower the expect. Oh, okay. Or maybe in the conversation, maybe when Marriott was trying to explain, but I don't think that's what she was, yeah, she meant though. Uh, oh, you're working now. Okay, no worries, being paid. Yeah, because I, I know, I understand what you're saying, being paid, but we know, you and I know that <laughs> of course those 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 are real issues infidelity abuse and all of that absolutely but my okay i'm saying in my language what that means is let's let's tell each other the truth eh? just so thorough right let's break it down to the bare minimum what really you know is it because people tend to you know you want to date someone you just i ah, just want to date what is the purpose behind? There has to be a purpose behind something you're doing. And if people don't have the resilience, the loyalty, and they don't have a purpose for a thing, they will abuse it. And we've all heard when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. This is what is happening, you know? Now, we're not, I'm not dismissing the issues that are prevalent in some relations, uh, in, in relationships. I'm not minimizing the toxicity part of it. There are people who are toxic. We know that. I'm not, that's not, 
if you are healthy and you want a healthy union, you're going to you're going to look out or be attracted to healthy people as well. That's where I'm coming from. Is this person a decent human being? It's not just necessarily about oh, does this person have all the money in the world? Money is not is not everything. No, you can have all the money and be miserable, right? Are you at peace? That's the number one thing. Choko and bale, it be fuere. Understand it? It be bad fuere because it be a fuere are. I've entered language again. Sorry. If you have peace of mind, you can make sensible decisions. You understand? Because listen, I've, some of my friends say eh, the, the the partners they ended up with are not the partners that they would have ended. They they chose for themselves. They said, well, not that they chose. They actually they ended up marrying these people. But they keep what I keep hearing among the ones that have had successful marriages are. I didn't, I, there was no, there was no butterfly. I didn't feel any butterfly feeling with him. It was more like he, he wanted a family and he had an idea of what he wants his family to look like. And it matched my idea of what I want a family to look like. And that's how we, we decided we're going to be together, get married and raise our families. There was no conversation about love, goosebumps. I think he ate for the ones that I've spoken to that have had successful marriages. So that tells you something. When I even asked my mom, like, mom, did you? My mom said, eh, three things I was looking for. Tiri, where? Number three. My mom came from a polygamous so home. He said, no one to marry, go marry more than one wife. A man that uh, takes care of his family, a man that knows how to take care of his family. The family comes first to him. And then another one like that, that she mentioned, I can't remember. Those were the reasons. She saw it and she followed it. And through to the T, my dad was that kind of person. You would think that she was a prophetess. But she said what she wanted and she got it. And today she's happy. When she reflects, she always has good memories. That does not mean that there were no challenges. Of course there were. But overall, she's very happy. She made the choice that she made. You know? Exactly, Mirabel. Thank you. I'm I'm glad that I'm not the only one that feels this way. You know, because sometimes I am cautious about sharing my thoughts on these issues because people will easily dismiss you and say, oh, it's because you're not married or because you're this. So I'm I'm very cautious. Not that I care what people's opinions are. I'm just very uh, I, I I'm very cautious about the words that I put out there. That's the kind of person I am. I'm a self-reflective person. So I'm not just going to throw out things. So I'm glad that you said it. This is, this is huge right here. You understand? You grew tired of the person. I grow tired of my siblings. Sometimes I don't feel like seeing my siblings, man. Sometimes they call me. I don't feel like picking up their calls. Do I just say, okay, you're no longer my sibling? Sometimes I'm, I'm tired of talking to my mom. I don't want to see her. Does it mean, okay... Let me just get rid of my mom. You know, I think we should start putting things back in perspective again. I hope, I hope you guys are understanding where I'm coming from. I, I hope I'm making sense, please. Let me know if I'm making sense. I beg. Oh, okay. Okay. Ajivala. Okay. Okay. Got it. I understand now. Uh... Yeah, they had different expectations. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. I got it. I got it. Right. Okay. Uh, when you say someone lowered the expectations, it made it means they had an expectation that they had to step down from the older generation. Simple had basic expectations, which we might see as low. Yes. That's actually, yeah, Mirabel, that makes sense. Um, please, can you guys hear me? Uh, Sister Jibola says that um, her sound seems to have gone. I hope everybody, hey, be konu. Mokuna not also, I won't do one hour, then you pano. Hey, I will just start crying. Yeah. 
Please, oh, don't do me like that. They call it chemistry now. They want this exactly. We want a spark on the first day. We spark, spark is so new. Spark that will carry you into a problem. Eh? I'm telling you, spark, spark, bawo, ibolo fertility, spark. When you see spark, run, that's danger sign. Spark is danger sign. How many people that you have sparked for have you are you with now currently? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Maybe a few had that spark and the team worked. Not everybody says sometimes that spark is danger. It sounds like uh, it's fun inside, but it's danger. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Adai, I agree with you. Everybody's expectation is different. Yes, yes, God's child, absolutely. Most times, men and women are looking at the wrong things. Thank you. Women, money, tall, dark, handsome, six-pack, 12-pack, <laughs> all that, puff, you know, groomed, everything, dory raw. With all that six pack, tall, dark, and handsome, now punching bag, they use the person do inside house. The person they do six packs for your sake. Hey, <laughs> Allah magic. I they see six pack, I they run. I know if you shout, I beg. Yeah? yeah, exactly. Men are looking at backside, front side, <laughs> covey. <laughs> covey is so new. They will now enter the covey and they will now lost. <laughs> yeah? So, hmm. Lack of commitment, yes, lack of loyalty, resilience, those things are not there. It's not as common as it used to be. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, being paid. You might want to do a replay. You have a complete understanding. Yeah, so what I was trying to say, I think um, um, the topic of the uh, conversation is did, did parents do marriage right? So it was based off of a conversation that I've had with friends, right? So I decided to bring it on this platform because it was a very interesting conversation and everybody had different different opinions on the matter, right? So yeah, you might want to do a replay and catch up on that. I think people should focus on vetting the values before exactly what are these person's values? Does this, does this person see you as a human being first? Because when sometimes when people meet you, they are looking at the back side, front side, if you're a woman, right? Because they say men are physical, right? But we also have to remember, then men did not really pay too much attention on the physical. Have we forgotten? There were times that men were looking for someone they feel like they could, uh, to a certain extent, for lack of better words, depend on or rely on, or that could be a good mother to their children. Do you understand what I'm saying? So even if sometimes they saw them and they were not so heavy set, they didn't have the back side, the front side. In future, they began to have the back side and front side. Of course, I have they've dropped one or two children or whatever. Maybe they're the type of people that, you know, as they get older, their body starts to transform, you know? So it wasn't really, really all about the physical for men before. I, to be honest, though, I mean, at least... It was not as it is now where they say men are physical men. It was not always like that to Mona correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe maybe I'm maybe I said it, maybe I'm saying something wrong. People should correct me if my if my observation is not quite hundred percent. Oh, okay. Okay, sister Jibala, I'm glad to hear that. Okay. <laughs> Neck a shout. I can hear you. <laughs> Thank you, Neka. Welcome, oh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Neka, how you doing? How body? I hope you are doing good, though. I hope you are doing much, much better. Hmm? Good to have you here. Ajaya, my mom calls my dad by name. Her friends call their husband's papa. Kini, Kini man, daddy, why? I just can never imagine that they are from the same. <laughs> that is so funny. Hey. Take it from me. Oh, sometimes betting the values is easier said than done. Also, values could change while in hmm, Mirabel. That's insightful. This is true. This can be true sometimes. Eh? Mm. 
Yay, Celine, welcome, welcome, sister. Good to see you here. Welcome, thanks for joining us. <laughs> Maybe the topic should have been if these generations are chosen right. I wouldn't use older generation as a family, to be honest with you. Well, my t again, like I said, being pay. So this was as a this was this stemmed from a conversation with friends, right? And it was did parents do marriage right? That's what it was. That's what the conversation was around. You know, it's to trigger the conversation about our parents. Did they do it right? It could be anybody's parents. It could be older generation. However way you want to. Whatever understanding you want to take out of it, you know. Um, I don't want to focus on this generation because I think that there's a lot that we can learn because, you know, there are, um, what's it called? There have been guidelines that have been put in place, natural laws, guidelines that have been put in place, and ancestral lines that have been put in place that... They said, like in Yoruba, they say, if you don't know where you're going, at least you know where you're coming from. You can go back to where you're coming from, right? So that's kind of my mindset and where I want to take this conversation. So yes, did our parents, because we tend to always want to use, sometimes compare. Our parents put up with this, they put up with that, they did this, they did that, without really asking ourselves the questions and really putting a mirror up to ourselves and saying, hey, what did our parents do right that sustained them that we are probably doing wrong? You know, so I hope I make sense there. Uh, in those days, men were looking for women that are strong enough to work in the farm, then character and her family background. True, true, true. Okay, good. I'm glad to hear that, Sister Neka. Um, that is true, but... Uh, these people divorcing have partners exhibiting the behavior before they married. It is tough to marry. Exactly. Yeah, Maria, that's a great point. People, sometimes people show you who they are from the beginning. And I'm going to be, men always tell you who they, that's one thing I can say about men. Men are always honest from the jump. Now women know they could pick the sign or sometimes we pick it and act like we're not seeing it. If I'm saying the wrong thing, people should say raise your hand in the in the comment section. Men will always show you who they are from the jump. Men are very realistic. They're very logical in their thinking. And most of them don't know how to pretend. They will, you will know. Because again, we also have to remember women have instincts that work for them. So when a man is not right, you will know, you will feel it. But most times we want to ignore the signs. Thank you, Marriott, for that comment. <laughs> Celine with the good hair. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You can't marry good and expect him to be sheep. That is true. That is very true. You know, you can't. Certainly not. <laughs> oh my God. You guys are cracking me up. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. I just feel like we can do better by each other. We can, we can respect each other more. We can, you know, uh, treat each other better. We have to recognize first that we're, we are human beings, first and foremost. I think that if you see someone as a human being, you will treat them correctly. If you see someone and say, this person is a human being, this person hurts, this person cries, this person bleeds right? So you can be empathetic and you can treat them the way you expect to be treated. I think starting from there is always a good place. And then if you're looking for any hashtag couple goals, please look to your older parents. If you are, if you're blessed with, you know, to have your parents around and you're blessed to have older people that are married and have had successful marriages, I'm not saying perfect marriages, but successful ones. Those should be your couple's goals, not the ones that have already been married for two years and, uh, you know, or still trying to find out or figure out. Even older couples, they still say there's a lot they're still learning from their partners. Older couples say it. Every I've heard it, you know. So 
did our parents, so to answer the question, did our parents understand the assignment? Yes, to a certain ex to a large extent, because they understood the importance of the family unit. They understood that the family is where communities and nations are built from. Based on that, they had a very deep understanding of what family meant that seems to be lost now. You know, yes, there were certain things that they did that they ought not to have done. They didn't get it right 100%. Nobody's ever 100%. Even some of the values that some of us are embracing now, they're not, they're very toxic for us as a people. Okay. So I think we should learn to take the good. You know, look at the past, look at where you're coming from, look at your parents, your grandparents, take the good from it, right? And then when you're meeting someone today, what values do, do, does that person have? The person may not be exactly like your grandfather or your grandmother, whatever, but your values matching his values and, and, uh, and um, what his priority is about family, what his thoughts are about family, that goes a long way. You know, there are people who even before they get married, they're like, ah, if it doesn't work out, I'm out. That shouldn't even be coming out flippantly when you're deciding you want to be with someone. Why would you already with your own mouth put an end to something before you enter? It, to me, it doesn't make any sense. You know, you already, you know, you've already ended that thing before you even entered. So when you enter with that attitude, when you go into any type of relationship with that attitude, it's easy for you to walk away because you've already in your subconscious established in your subconscious that, look, if this thing doesn't work out, I'm done. So you wait for the littlest thing and you walk away, man or woman. So men and women, we need to hold each other accountable and we need to, you need to be asking, we need to be asking the right questions. You know, not, oh, does this person make me feel butterflies in my stomach? Oh, I can't sleep. I can't eat. You know, I can't say, uh, you know, this man who oh, is the love of my, all those things should not be playing the role. It is the realistic things that should be, the practical things that should be, should be determining your decisions on whether you want to be with someone or not. Look for someone who's kind to you, who will give you peace of mind that you can, both of you will understand each other. You might quarrel, but to not go settle up between ourselves. That's what you sh we should, you should look out for. And that's what you should want in your life. You know? Um, okay. God says, I disagree. Men are not always transparent. How would you know a man who will impregnate another woman because his wife does not have a child yet? Uh, God's child, there are so many ways you can know. I mean, in my own experience, though, let me speak for myself. Men always tell you what they want from the beginning. They might not say it with their mouth. They, cannot, they might not come out categorically and say, oh, by the way, this is what I want to do. No. In their actions, in their demeanor, in things that they do or say, without saying too much, you can tell. This is what I mean. Men are literally predictable. Majority of them, that, that, that is not to say that they're not ones that are very corny and will want to swindle you or deceive you. Yes, there are those, right? But in general, men are honest. This is my own experience. So let me just say it like that. Let me just do that, personalize it. Yes, trends have a great influence on the younger generation. Absolutely. Oh, Mirabel, thanks for explaining that. I think she means they might not be transparent with their words, but their actions. Men are also tacky and leave. Thank you very much. They leave clues unintentionally. I'm, I, this has been my experience. This has been my experience. They're very tacky. Women, when they say women are smarter, what they mean is women, the sense of intuition that women have, eh, you cannot compare. You cannot, that is why back in the day, during historical times, when they would come bring a priestess to come and tell the king what is about to happen, they used to respect women. They'll be like, whoa. When the woman go tell the king, say, if you don't do this and this, this will come upon the community or the village. The king has no choice but to respect that. You know? Be for men who understand the intuition of a woman, they understand what I'm talking about. It is powerful. 
There's no way you can avoid it. Women, because we, we understand, you know, some of us, we don't use that. We don't use that when we should. We're silent. We silence it. So it's not as effective. But fear women. Women have intuition, though. No, they can tell literally what is going on without you saying anything. You already know. You know? So. Okay, Neka. Hmm. Well, even back then, oh gosh, there were a lot of men that were polygamous. Most men were not uh, monogamous. Most men were not. The men that married only one woman, they, claim, people, they used to laugh at them that they didn't have money. That's why they married uh, only one. You know? They used to laugh at them that they, didn't marry, they don't have money. They don't have enough money. That's why they only married one. You understand? So, yes, of course, men, there's still men who are polygamous. There's nothing wrong with being polygamous if that's what you want. But as a man, look for another woman who doesn't mind being in a polygamous situation with you. There are some women who are open to these things. You know, there's some women who are open to polygamy. Let's, let's say it as it is. There's some women who are open to it. So, but if you're a man and you're wanting to be polygamous, find a woman who also doesn't mind being polygamous, you know, but don't go and be with someone who only thinks monogamy and then impose polygamy on, on them by force. That's where the problem is. And that's why sometimes we're having all these issues that we're having. You know, so hey, a man can believe what he wants. A man can a man can believe that I will go to space. That doesn't mean that he will go to space. A man can believe I'm going to climb the tallest tree. Sometimes he may not climb the tallest tree. We can believe. We can all believe. Men can believe. Women can believe. You know. The world is evolving so fast, and impatience is the order of the day. Thank you, Celine. Endurance and patience that our parents used to practice in our case is sharp, sharp, or oh, I'm done. <laughs> Selling don't talk and finish, so I don't need to add anything more. <laughs> now, sharp, sharp. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. microwave, alpha. Eh, okay, I beg, I don't have time. Bounce. <laughs> oh, my God, that is so funny. He says sharp, sharp, oh, oh I'm, I'm done. <laughs> um, yeah, they yeah, that's yeah, exactly. God child. Yeah, when they're obsessed with a particular woman and want her by all means, yeah, you know, exactly. So, my people, I think we have a we don't exhaust the matter now. We do not think we can wrap them up. I don't want to take for here today. We get another life in two days' time. Um, I want to talk about there's a comment that a uh, Bonner boy's ex girlfriend apparently I just found that comment. I think I, I found a video they were addressing it. Some someone was addressing the comments that she made, the ex girlfriend made, and I was like, okay, we need to address this, you know. So, uh, I'm not saying I don't bash people, me, I know they do celebrity blog. I know send celebrity. I'm sorry. My own are the lessons when we feel learned from inside. Naomi, they draw out. So if I see anything that I think is interesting that we can address, I will bring it on. So that's where I'm going to be addressing Burner Boy's issue, um, ex-girlfriend's issue from, you know. It's going to, there's some lessons that I see there that we can take away based on her comments and all of that. And we can rob minds about it, you know, and share our thoughts and opinions on, on on the matter. I am a fan of Bonner Boy. I love all Nigerian music and not the bash any one of them. They they try. Mm? Nobody perfect, but we'll go address this particular one coming up. And of course we have village meeting coming up as well. I have it all lined up. So I was able to get myself together and just send out the invite. So I don't start sending last minute invites out. And then all of them will come, come, they harass me. They say, we did not know now. You did not send out invite on time. I don't want you people to come and be uh, using mouth, Marriott mouth sharp. Mirabe, they fear those two people. So I just said to that, say, make a send invite. Make a come. 
Yeah, yeah, being paying no while, maybe on the weekend, you know, whenever you get chance, I have like, um, I have a few lives that are lined up that we can talk about. And the one coming up, we can also use, you know, if you have time, you can call and we can talk a little bit about this as well. And we can do a part two on this conversation if you guys want. I can schedule a part two, maybe for tomorrow or something in between. And we can talk about what else you guys want to address about this, you know, or we can talk about it maybe later on in the day, but not today, guys, <laughs> you know. So, yes, yeah, so my sister Mirabel, absolutely. I said, you know what? I'm going to be ready for you people. <laughs> pam, 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 pam. Let's, let's talk about these things, you know. <laughs> let's learn and unlearn let's be growing together and be adding knowledge to knowledge eh? and be improving each other <laughs> you shock eh you shock you <laughs> yeah, man. yes I think I shock you eh I know yeah so I probably want you guys let me know if you want me to do a part two of this let me know if you want me to do a part two please indicate in the comment section do you want us to carry this conversation further or have we done justice for now? Let me know. I don't want to schedule it and then we don't have anything to talk about. So let me know if you guys want me to do a part two. I'm looking out for your comments. Yes or no? Do part two. Yes or no? Yes or no? That's all. Indicate by saying yes or no. <laughs> I'm not playing, no. Ah, Mirabel, I'm not playing at all. I'm like, ah, no, I got to, I got to, I got to put these things out there so I don't forget and start rushing, you know? <laughs> okay. All right. No, Allah. I will squeeze it in maybe on a Sunday then. Since we have a village meeting, we can do part two on Sunday. Either way, you're fine. Okay. Anyone else? Yes or no? We have one yes. We have uh, one on the fence. It doesn't, either way, indifferent. If I get two more yeses, then it's a deal. If I don't, then we move on. We move forward. Going once, going twice. So if you're catching this on replay, please oh, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, comment. Let's move this ministry forward. You know, we are slowly, we are slowly growing, but uh, let's, let's get to 2K so we can celebrate again. Hmm? Then we can pop champagne. <laughs> yes. Oh, Celine says that uh, it's difficult to solve no has ever seen. Uh, what is that? Okay. Part two is good. Saturday or Sunday. Okay, Sunday. Saturday, we get village meeting on Saturday, Neka. Bring palm wine. We get Saturday village meeting. Look, we address waiting consign us. <laughs> okay, so Celine says yes. All right. So, sounds good then. So part two, it is on Sunday. I'll send out the invite right after this. And thank you guys for joining me. Okay. All right. On issues surrounding. Okay. All right. Great. All right. So we'll do a part two on Sunday. So guys, let me leave you. I don't want to stay too long. We're almost getting to an hour and a half. I didn't anticipate that, but it was great conversation. Thank you so much, Marriott, for calling in. I really appreciate you. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for joining me. I, I really appreciate the support that you guys have been providing. Honestly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for the support. And I will see you guys uh, on Thursday. We have our next live on Thursday. We would... Uh, Continue to talk more. Thank you very much, Sister Jibola. Thank you, Celine, Mirabel, my darling, Neka, um, God's child. Um, who else? Who am I missing? Please, oh, anybody I'm missing, don't be offended. Don't be angry. Don't be vexing for me. I love you all. I can't say all the names. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll see you guys on my next live. Enjoy the rest of your day. Love you all. Bye.